dignity or beauty, nothing attractive that would draw us to him. We despised him and rejected him. He endured suffering and pain. He was arrested and sent away to die. He endured it humbly, never saying a word. All of us were lost like sheep, going our own way. And yet he took the punishment each of us deserved. that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. He bowed his head and died. The world stood in silence for three days. Then, a violent earthquake shook the ground as an angel of the Lord came down, declaring to Jesus' friends, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen.
King of All Kings, a big shout out today! So good to see all of you. Thanks for coming to celebrate Jesus today. We're gonna open this morning in prayer. Father, we love you. God, we thank you so much that we get to celebrate today our risen King. God, we thank you that Jesus is alive. We thank you that he is alive in our hearts, in our families, in our community, in our world today, Lord Jesus. We thank you for what you are doing. So God, today we lay our lives at your feet. We look to you and whatever things that we are going through or dealing with right now, we thank you that you are our counselor, that you are our healer, that you are above and more powerful than every circumstance in our lives. So God, we celebrate you today, our risen Savior, our risen King. Amen. Let's worship together. Sing this out today, your cross. Your cross is my freedom, your stripes, my healing. All praise, King Jesus. Glory to God in heaven. Your blood right now is still speaking. Your love is still reaching. All praise, King Jesus. Glory to God forever. Your cross is my freedom, your stripes are my healing, all praise King Jesus. Glory to God in heaven, your blood is still speaking, your love is still reaching, all praise King Jesus. Glory 
sin was heavy But chains break out the weight of your glory I needed shelter, I was an orphan Now you call me a citizen of heaven I needed rescue, my sin was heavy But chains break out the weight of your glory Well, every sin has to break I needed shelter, I was an orphan Now you call me a citizen of heaven When I was broken, you were my healing Now you're say soul praise the Lord God we are here for you this morning we thank you for the reality that you conquered the grave that you are risen we say that we love you this morning in Jesus name all God's people said amen amen, amen. hey welcome to church give yourselves a round of applause yeah thanks for coming welcome to radiant we are so glad you're here. My name is Paul, and I have the privilege of serving on the team here. Welcome to church. If it is your first time at Radiant, we're so glad you're here. We would love to connect with you, and the easiest way for that to happen is a connection card. You'll find it on the seat in front of you. You can either fill that out, or you can scan the QR code. It's up there as well. You can drop it in the buckets as they go by at the end of service, but that will allow us to just connect with you, send you an email, give you more information about our church. 
Hey, as you can tell, we've got a pretty packed house this morning. Thank you for coming. If you have a little one or a child or a baby and you need to take them out, you're gonna go out that exit, that tunnel right there. And on the left, there's a parent's room as well as a nursing mom's room. Hey, a couple of things. Next week, we have two things coming up. We have Radiant Connect and we have baptisms. Radiant Connect is a one-time dinner that you can attend. You'll learn more about our vision and our values. You'll meet our staff. You'll just learn how to get more connected and involved. Maybe you want more information on a small group or more information on serving on a team, whatever that looks like. I'd love to invite you to attend Radiant Connect next week. It's Sunday night right here in this building from 5 to 7 p.m. I'll be there. We're going to have a lot of food. We'll feed you. It'll be a great time. And then also, baptisms are happening right after second service next week. So if you'd like to celebrate with us as we're going to celebrate those who are making that decision to go public with their faith, or maybe you want to be baptized and you said, this is my time to get baptized, we would love to do, um, actually celebrate that with you. So you can go up to the info center for more information on Connect or on baptisms. Hey, we we are so excited about today. We have about 30 seconds, and we'd love for you to take those 30 seconds, maybe meet somebody new, say hi to somebody next to you, and then watch this video. Well, Radiant, he is risen. (laughs) All right. Old school. I spent 20 years as a youth pastor, so I like it when you scream at me. If you want a church where you don't scream, this ain't it. All right? So, uh, but here's what we do. I'll say he is risen. You yell back at me. He is risen indeed. You ready? Here we go. One, two, three. He is risen. risen He is risen. risen Give yourselves a hand. There you go. Come on now. Good job. Hey, uh, I know Pastor Paul said this a moment ago, but if it is your first time, uh, we're so grateful that you're here. And uh, we are a church about just over seven years old. Uh, We began as a prayer meeting uh, here in Overland Park at our house. And uh, we've been portable for a number of years, seven years. And uh, we moved into this building, um, purchased this building uh, in March and had our first uh, services here in March. So if you feel new, uh, well, this is new to us too. We're new as well. And so uh, we're glad that you're here. Um, Really thankful. And so Raiden, can we give a big hand for everybody that's here for the first time? So glad you're here. Yeah, it's a delight. We're glad that you're with us and believing God to mark your life today and believing God to touch you in a, really in a personal way. And have really designed this message today to just go after your relationship with Jesus. And, and I wanna dig in on your encounter with him. Um, I wanna talk about your story with him. And so that um, Jesus is not just a, a category of your life, but Jesus is, the word that we're gonna talk about today is that he's your king. And so on Easter we celebrate he, that he is the risen king. We've been in this series where we've been talking about who Jesus is. So we talked about Jesus as the lamb. Uh, We talked about Jesus as the rescuer. We talked about Jesus as the Christ. And today, I wanna go after this idea that Jesus is the risen king. So I'd like to invite you to stand with me for the honoring of reading God's word together. We're actually gonna read a lot of scripture today. And so uh, this is a lot. Let me just kind of set up the scene for you. This is a moment right here where just before Jesus goes to the cross where he's standing before Pilate. And so I'm gonna give you a text here where he stands and he has a conversation with Pilate because my dream is is that just like Pilate had a conversation with Jesus, that today in this little tiny amount of time that we have together, that you would have a conversation with Jesus. So my dream is is that you would sing songs and my dream is is that you would see people that you know. But more than those things, it's that you would have a conversation with Jesus like Pilate has one right here. And so we're gonna read this text, then we're gonna look at the text where Jesus has risen from the dead, all right, and then we'll pray, and then we'll go after this. 
Um, and this will lead towards the conclusion of the message where I'm gonna invite you to talk to Jesus and have a conversation with him. Here we go. I'm uh, gonna read a lot. John chapter 18, verse 33 says this. Pilate then went back into the palace, summoned Jesus and asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Say king. king. Are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea, Jesus asked? Isn't that wild? So here's Jesus and he's talking to this Roman leader and he looks at him and he's asking about what's your, what's your motive? What's your intent? That's what I want for you today. I want you to, Jesus, could you be that personal where you have a conversation with him? Is that your own idea, Jesus asked, or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew, Pilate replied? Your own people and chief priests handed you over to me. What is it you have done? Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, you say that I'm a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on this side of truth listens to me. What is truth, said Pilate. With this, he went out to the Jews gathered there and said, I find no basis for a charge against him. But it is your custom for me to release to you one prisoner at the time of the Passover. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? And they shouted back, no, not him. Give us Barabbas. Now Barabbas had taken part in an uprising. Chapter 19. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged or whipped. Soldiers twisted a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and went up to him again and again saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They're mocking him. And they slapped him in the face. All right, now, I love that. That's the NIV version, but just for fun, I want you to just see the message paraphrase because I just want you to look at it slant and see it from just a different angle. It says this, verse 36, my kingdom, said Jesus. So this is the same text. We're just reading it again. I'm gonna have you stand all day. Get ready, all right. <laughs> my, uh, my kingdom, said Jesus, doesn't consist of what you see around you. If it did, my followers would fight so that I wouldn't be handed over to the Jews. But I'm not that kind of king not the world's kind of king. Then Pilate said, so are you a king or not? And Jesus answered, you tell me because I am, capital K, king. I was born and entered the world so that I could witness to the truth. Everyone who cares for truth, who has any feeling for the truth, recognizes my voice. All right, Jesus goes to the cross. He dies on the cross. John 20, we see this resurrection story. I'll read it to you and then we'll pray. Verse three, so Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb also went inside. He saw and believed. Jesus, we come before you today on Resurrection Sunday. We come before you on the greatest celebration day of the year. And we celebrate Jesus, the King, the risen King. And Jesus, we ask that you would do a work in this very room today. We ask, Lord, that we would behold the King, capital K. We ask, Lord Jesus, that all of the things that keep us distracted would fade and that the excellency, the authority, the worth, the glory of the eternal risen King would rise in our allegiance and our affection. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. So, a number of years ago, uh, my family, uh, extended family, got together for what was supposed to be just good, clean, fun, and a real swell time uh, for a family holiday. We thought it'd be cool to take 14 little cousins and give them those lanterns where you light the lantern on fire and send it up in the air. Just that's what we thought would be fun. Um, maybe intellectually lacking, but we thought that would be great. Only to have the little cousins light the little lanterns on fire. They start to go up in the air. And behold, in our um, lawn was a tree. 
and the lantern goes into the tree and starts to catch the branch way up at the top of the tree on fire. Dark night of the soul, scary moment. Uh, so the tree is on fire. Now, the fun part is to watch what people do when all of a sudden the tree is on fire. Because in that moment, you have no idea what to do, right? In that moment, uh, I, I, I don't know why I thought this would be smart, but I took my shoes off and I started chucking my shoes. <laughs> I was not even close. I did manage to hit my brother in the face, which was amazing. Um, and made for the whole family reunion. It was incredible, actually. My sister-in-law went and she began to get water um, and she was trying to throw little like, like buckets of water. And, but I mean, you'd have to play for the Royals to be able to hit it. It was, it was impossible. Uh, my my brother-in-law decided to go drive the minivan uh, to try to get under the tree, pull it up under the tree, try to climb the, instantly climb the burning tree. You know, like nothing makes sense. He accidentally hit somebody on the drive over, which it was great. It was chaos. And uh, thanks mom for that laugh right there. That's, and uh, I'll tell you that because I feel like um, metaphorically speaking, I wanna talk to you where you're at today. Because it could be that when you look at your life, you feel like, metaphorically, my life is on fire. Um, there's disappointment that I can't fathom. The relationships that I thought uh, would last a lifetime have not. The people that I thought I could trust, I cannot. Um, the uh, finance that I thought I had, I do not. The, um, my physical body is sick. And many of us, uh, you, you, you get down in life, and when you face this moment where it feels like your life is on fire, I've watched some of my closest friends um, chaotically do crazy things. So metaphorically, I'm talking about throwing shoes, but, but, but they've done things in the midst of their pain, in the midst of their disappointment in how life turned out, where they're really just, just messing up their lives. And I think that uh, a moment where you have this recognition that on my own, my own ability to build my life, my own ability, my own strength to create a life that I want, when, when, that, when, when the day comes where that moment, that recognition that I can't do this, I can't, I can't build, I'm gonna use the word kingdom, I can't build my own kingdom, kingdom. I can't build my life on my own and have it work. It's possible that the day that your kingdom crumbles could be your greatest day. Because it could be that that's the day that you recognize, I need King Jesus. Actually, when we read the scriptures, Jesus uses this word kingdom, and he's talking about that his kingdom has come. And many people, when they associate Jesus' teaching, they think mostly about some of the, uh, the ideas that he taught about how to live, and those are really good. Uh, they, they might think m mostly uh, about how he told us to relate to people. But when Jesus came, he talked all about that his kingdom has come. He's talking about the, the reign of the king. And this word kingdom is not a common word for us. Uh, we don't really use it much in our language um, because for us, we don't live in a kingdom. We live in a democracy. And the great thing about a democracy is it starts with we the people, right? And so you and I, we tend to kind of think, even when it comes to our relationship with Jesus, it's almost like this mutual partnership, maybe like a bartering, maybe like a... But, but, but this whole idea about Jesus is not... is 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 is. Actually, that word kingdom, it means the, the domain of the king. It's, it's where he rules. It's where he reigns. So if, when we talk about Jesus being king, think about him as supreme. Think about him as, as the good king. And where I'm going to go is I'm going to talk to you about that he is a good king. He's the kind of king that you want to give your life to. But before we talk about his character, let's just talk about his authority and just recognize that, wow, when we start to look at, here's Jesus engaging with Pilate. And he's talking about that he is the capital K king. That, you know, you could look at these, these Romans, these people, these Jews that said, crucify him. Or the people right there that say, are you the king and put him on a cross? And I just imagine in that moment where here's Jesus and he looks like he is the humble servant. And to say you're a king in that moment feels like, how could this be true? And yet there'll be a day. Revelation, we, we read about that there's a day that 
John beholds on island of Patmos where he says he's the king of kings, he's the Lord of lords. So the very people, these, these people that at one point put him on a cross or slapped his face or in mockery put a crown of thorns, one day they'll say, oh, I mean, the, the, the Roman Empire was nothing compared to your kingdom. The, the kings have nothing. You're the king of all kings. Your kingdom lasts forever and ever, and there'll be awe and marvel and wonder. And you and I, we live in this day where you've got 50, 60, 70, 80 years, 90 years on planet Earth, and this whole pr- uh, uh, talk of Jesus, we've got this little window of time to make him your king. So don't think geography when we talk kingdom. Think, think, a, think the allegiance and the affections in the hearts of man. It's, and, and the question is, Jesus is the king. At the root, the question today is, is he your king? So that's what Jesus is talking with Pilate about. He's saying, hey, wh- what's going on inside of you? Because Jesus offers this privilege to us to, to say, I give you my life. I recognize, I recognize that you are king. All are who are on this side of truth. I recognize you're the king and I give you my life. I, you, you are in that position and I give you that space in my heart. You, you're the king of my heart. You're the king of my life. So when we talk kingdom, I want to, does, does he reign in your heart? Does, does Jesus reign? Have you given your life to him and let him be king? This word, I was thinking about this word kingdom, the, the domain of the king. We don't use the word kingdom a lot, but I was thinking about the word boredom, right? I'm the, I'm the parent of teenagers, right? So I have a 19-year-old, an 18-year-old, a 16-year-old, a 13-year-old, all teenagers, right? Here's the temptation in our house, right? In our house, it is this, there is a word in our house, boredom, right? And, and the, the, the enemy is like, we do not, boredom, right? And parents, you know, like, I'm so bored, right? You know that feeling? And so we would use that word. And what is that? That's not speaking, there is not a state next to us called boredom. It's a, it's a state of the heart. It's a, I have to, I'm bored. So the, uh, this idea is, it's the domain of the board. Listen, the idea of kingdom is, it's, it's the domain of the king. We're not talking geography. We're talking about you. In your own life, when you come in here and you sing songs, when you live not just on Easter, but the other 364 days a year, it's a position of the heart. Is our, has your heart, has your life entered into the domain of the king? Where you would say, you're, you're the king of my life. Because I love the idea of uh, a democracy for our government. And that's, we all love, we all love that. And when we look into the kingdom of God though, there is one who has supreme authority. There is one who is all. So that leaves us this question. Okay, if he is the king, and I have the invitation to make him the king of my life, then the question would be, um, what, what kind of king is he? Because here at Radiant, we, we've got a vision for you. We've got a dream. If you, if you decide to make this your house, we've got a dream that you would, we sang the song about, I needed rescue. We, we've got this dream that you would be rescued that the king of kings would rescue you. He pulls you out. We call it salvation, all right? Jesus saves people. He rescues people. And that's the moment where you decide, I will not live for myself. I, I have decided to let Jesus rescue me. And now I enter out of me being the king. I let him be the king. And the domain of, I am a part of the domain of the king. I'm a part of the family of God. I have been rescued. Of course, here at Radiant, our dream is that it doesn't stop there. Our dream is that you would step into this place of being transformed because Jesus transforms. And he takes, what, when you feel like your life is on fire, when you feel like things are, it's, there's, it's, it's not just that you pray a prayer and you've got the hope of heaven. And we love the hope of heaven. But that there's transformation, that God does a work now so that we can be transformed. Here at Radiant, we work diligently to help people get into relationships with other people, help people spend time alone with the king so that over time, you're not just rescued, but you're also transformed. You become a different person. And then our dream is that you would become empowered, filled with the power of God. So, so we love the way that Paul says, the same power that raised Christ from the dead lives in us. So when we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the scriptures say that same power dwells inside of the believer. <laughs> That's a good day. 
So you start to believe that and get that, then, then your life, your life actually starts to possess some meaning because the, the power of God is at work inside of you. The power of God to not just transform you, but then also to lay your life down to help other people. You'll find yourself enjoying life when it actually is not about you being king, but you've gone on a, we call it a discipleship pathway to become a radiant disciple of Jesus, where you start to then, we use the word radiant, where you start to just shine. Paul says, they shine like stars in a wicked and depraved generation. Psalm 34, 5 says, those who look to him are radiant. Ephesians 5 talks about that we are a, like a radiant bride. It's this idea of we shine bright. It's holy. It's putting other people first. It's different in a dark world. So that's our dream. Our dream is that you would, that you would say, oh, I, I'm really not that great at being the king of my life. And I have found that some of the people that have the hardest time surrendering their life to Jesus and making him king are the people that are really confident that they can build their own kingdom. But in the moments where you finally have your kingdom crumble, or old school 90s, when all my kingdoms fall, you remember that? All my kingdoms fall. That's the moment where you surrender. So if you are in that place, trees on fire, life's on fire. And you're looking for a way. Don't ruin your life by your idea of how to fix your life. Jesus has a way. Jesus rescues. Jesus, the king, he transforms. He empowers. He takes broken, messed up people. And he takes, he takes the, the fishermen and the tax collectors and turns them into healed proclaimers of the good news with something to live for. And that could be you. That's me. Just broken, weak, messed up people that finally go, my, my kingdom can't cut it. I can't do it. I need Christ. So I went, I think that begs the question where you kind of end up saying, okay, tell me a little bit about this Jesus, all right? If I give my life to Jesus, if I make him my king, I, 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 need to, I wanna know what he's like. A few ideas. One, Jesus is the servant king. So he's not the person that uses his power over you to hurt you. He uses his power to help you. So Jesus when, he's, when, when God becomes man and we get to see what God is like on the planet earth, Jesus uses that power to go around and he heals the sick. The blind man who screams, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus is the one who takes the children and stops and has time for them. The people who are the, Jesus touches the leper. Jesus, in Matthew 5, it says that Jesus um, has compassion on the people. When he saw the people, he had compassion on them and he began to teach them, saying, so he touched their bodies, he touched their minds. Let me teach you. That's how we get the Sermon on the Mount. So Jesus, he, he's a servant king. He uses his power, not with the sword, but with a towel. And he washes the feet of the very people that he's rescued. That is the kind of king that he is. That's the kind of king. Jesus, he's, he's the crucified king. So a king in that day would be lifted up high on a royal throne. A king in that day would have a golden throne or a golden crown on his head. A king in that day would have a robe. A king in that day, there might be a, a, dex, a king, king of certain land. And Jesus, the crucified king, Goes, as low, goes low as a servant and then goes even lower still to be crucified like a common criminal, knowing full, full well what would happen. And there's Jesus, king of the Jews, written on a sign, a crown of thorns that they put on his head to mock him. I mean, it wasn't like in the Roman Empire they put a crown of thorns on all. They, this was specific on Jesus who had the claim to be king. Why? Because of mockery. Here's Jesus. They're throwing lots for his robe. They're mocking him. And here he is. He's the crucified king. The crucified God. Why? The king that goes low for you. On Friday, we had Good Friday <laughs> We had people and they came up here and they just prayed and they talked to Jesus because it's, it's a real relationship. So it's not a show, it's 
It's not a performance, it's not a screen, it's not a stage. It's, it's, it's people. It's the people that have just said, um, I tried to build my kingdom. I tried to build it with wealth. I tried to build it with health. I tried to build it with fame. I tried to build it with comfort. I tried to build it with technology. I tried to build it with my portfolio. I, turns out, I don't do that great at being king. Turns out I need someone to rescue me. Turns out I need someone else to transform me. I need the power of someone else. It's actually the weak and the broken people. When, they're, when your kingdom crumbles, it could be your greatest day. It could be the day that you finally go, I needed shelter. I needed a friend. I needed a rescuer. I needed a king. And I, one of my sadnesses in my generation, I'm old school, baby. I, I'm a, I mean, I, I grew up in the, I, I, grew, I was born in the 70s. I grew up like going to youth camps where we played chubby bunny, we pop balloons with our butts, like that kind of thing. I grew up, you know, singing all kinds of silly songs and somehow they were all mixed in with talk of Jesus. And, and I'm not putting any of that down, but somehow in my mind as a teenager, somehow in my mind as a kid, somehow it was easy to just kind of think that my, my whole, the whole goal was that they would entertain me enough to get me to pray a prayer. And I, I wanna just invite you, if I just got you here in our brand new building for just a moment, one day we'll have all the walls painted, baby. I mean, come on. <laughs> but if I have you here for just a minute, I just don't want you to, to live your life thinking that you got it all because you prayed a prayer at a camp playing chubby bunny and you prayed a prayer. I think that we put so much emphasis on a past decision. When I read Jesus, I feel Jesus caring about being a present disciple. Like, do you love me now? Are you with me? My invitation to you, oh, I love it. I, I believe that, man, you prayed a prayer. Come on, let's go. You have decided to follow Jesus. Let's go. And I wanna tell you that what's available to the people of God in the kingdom of God is so abundant. Man, give it all that you've got to be a present tense disciple now, to have relationship and be close to him now so that that decision that you made flourishes, grows, and you turn into this flourishing disciple, this fruitful disciple of Jesus. And here's Jesus. He's, what does he look like? If I'm gonna make the decision to make him my king, what's he like? Well, he's a servant king. He's a crucified. He went to a cross for you, died in your place for yours, for you. And not only is he the servant, not only is he crucified king, but here's the one that we celebrate today. He's the risen king. So when we read these stories about Jesus is not here, he is risen. Why do you look for the living among the dead? Um, that is a belief system that causes the church of Jesus Christ to be powerful. Here's what I mean. I want you to ask yourself this question. How do I live different because of my knowledge of the resurrection? So if I know of the resurrected king, how, how am I living any differently? And, um, what, 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 what difference does it make in my life? Because I see this with the disciples. I see this with the disciples where Jesus on the cross, and I mean, the crowds are mocking him. They're screaming, crucify him. The Romans, I mean, mocking him with, and the disciples have left him. They've deserted him. We know at the foot of the cross, there's, there's John and there's Jesus' mother and there's, there's a few. But the scriptures say that they scattered. So there's a handful of people at the, at the cross. But here are the ones that have, I mean, they've seen him. They've seen him walk on water. They've heard him teach. They've said, wow, even the winds and the waves obey him. I mean, they have had moments, but they scatter. When we read in Acts 5, later there's a moment where they're beaten and they say, we count it a privilege to suffer for Christ. We count it a privilege. We rejoice, the language, we rejoice in suffering. Now, how do you get from scattered? I mean, you remember the story, Peter. I don't know him, I don't know him, I don't know him. Scat how do you get from disciples that scatter to the, the disciples that want to suffer for the cause of their king? Answer, it's the resurrection. 
changes everything. Hey, uh, are you guys telling me Jesus just walked in the room? The one that we saw on the cross? Yeah, no, he's alive. What? He's risen from the dead. So it wasn't just a good teaching. That was some good teaching, yeah. It, it, he did the miracles, I know, he did the miracles. And, and he healed, he taught, he, he multiplied the bread and the fish. Yeah, he did all that. But he rose from the dead. So you get that inside of you. And all of a sudden, you're like, I will take it to my world, to the known world. He is the risen king. Eyes light up. He said he was the capital K king. He is the king of all kings. And he is the king of my heart. He's the risen king. And many of us today... We have such anxiety about facing the future. You do, I do. We have this tendency to create a storyline of moving forward. I need everything in my life. I need every box checked for me to be okay. I need my finance right and my house right. I need this. I've got my own dreams and my own allegiance to myself. But I wanna, if you, if you enter into the world of these followers of Jesus, that experienced the risen king, then they could face anything and not be afraid. They could face anything. And that's what I want for you today. What I dream of for you. Actually, old school, we used to sing this song. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. I live in the most anxious fearful generation right now, right here, all of us. We're so afraid, we're so, we're so anxious. But let me tell you some good news. The king of all kings, he's risen from the dead and you don't have to live with fear. You can live a life of meaning where you're making a difference with your life. Why? Because you've got all the right master classes figured out, because you've got all the right education, because you've got all the right finances, because you've got all the right relationships, because you've got all the right political ways of thinking. But no, because he lives. Because he lives, no matter what I face, this ends in eternity with him. And I've got this little window of time. He is the king. Here's the question. Are you a part of his kingdom? If you feel like your life is on fire, if you feel like things are so hard, this could be the day that your kingdom crumbles and you say, Jesus, be the king of my heart. Be the king of my life. I want you to be my king. I want to invite you just to bow your heads with me. I know oftentimes preachers will lead you in a prayer. Today, I'd just like to invite you to pray your own prayer. If today, the good news is this, Jesus lived perfectly, died, rose from the dead. He wants relationship with you. No matter how broken or on fire your life is, he desires relationship with you. He went to the cross because he wants relationship with you. That means he's amazing. This is the best invitation given to mankind. Today, if you would say, I want Jesus to be my king, I wanna invite you just between you and him right now, would you just say, Jesus, be the king of my life. Rescue me. I need you. I've got anxiety like I can't fathom. Or my relationships are a mess. I'm, I'm, I'm done. Turns out I can't lead myself like you can lead me. I want you to be my king. I give you my life. Make me a new person. 
save me today. I give you my life. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you that you rose from the dead and you live today. Come live in this heart and be the king of my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all stand together. Listen, if you today made a decision to follow Jesus, it's the best choice that you can make. Radiant, can we just give a big hand for everybody that made that choice today? Can you just do that? Yeah, let's go. So good. So awesome. And we got a dream. Our dream is to do some life together to help you. And it would be a delight, if you're willing, to just let us know. There's a card like this. And if you would fill this out, there's a bucket that's about to come by. You can always let us know on a website, but it's relationship. If we could start to do some, have some relationship, sometimes you, whether it's paper, digital, we just need a way of connecting so that we can start to, so we can start to build together and we can help you. A lot of times in isolation, you'll give up so easy. But if you've got some comrades, if you got a little, I had a little huddle right between, this, between the last service and this service, a little huddle of people saying, let's go. Listen, you need people in your life to say, let's go. Yeah, but I fell short. I know. He is good. He is perfect. You're gonna fall short, but you've got a king. He'll pick you up again. So this is not just like church administration for church people. We could get rid of these we care about the relationship. We want to help you. We want to go on the journey with you. So I'd invite you to fill that out uh, and drop it in a bucket as well. All right, let's give together. Let's sing this song together. Uh, Jesus, you are the king and you are our king. You're the risen king. There's no God like our God. We honor you above all things. Our affections are to you. Our allegiance is to you. Worthy is our God. We honor you today. We give you our lives. God, take what we give. Use it to make a difference in this incredible city. God, we thank you for Kansas City. God, what a joy to get to live here. God, we thank you for the privilege, Lord God, to be heralders, to take care of the hurting and the poor and the broken. We thank you for the privilege, Lord God, to follow Jesus today. This is the joy of our lives. So God, be magnified in our giving. Be magnified, Lord God, in our living. Be magnified with our songs. Be magnified with our time. We honor you today. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Let's give and let's sing this song together. Ooh, your cross, my freedom, your stripes, my healing, my praise, King Jesus, glory to God.
made a decision to follow Jesus, let us know. Also, next week's gonna be really fun as we celebrate in baptism. We'd love to see you next week. Also, uh, Pastor Paul said it, but we'd love to see you at Connect. Hey, today, we don't always have this, but we've got an ice cream truck. We've got um, a balloon artist. We've got a little reason for you to stay, an extra 10 minutes. Let your kids play a little bit. And I'd like to encourage you to try to meet one family, somebody before you go, stay a little bit longer, eat a little bit more ice cream. That's how you do it. Easter, you do ice cream. That's the way it is, all right? Hey, love you, love you, love you. Thanks for coming to church today. Have a great Easter, everybody. Thanks for coming to church.